Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palanepan Manikam. In this video, we're going to talk about Novavax vaccine. You know, this is a new player to the list of already existing vaccines. This is going to be approved by UK and it is going to be available in US in the later part of the year. Let's see what this contains and how this works. Let's dive deep into it. I still can't believe that some of you guys are thinking that pharma companies are paying me to do this. So instead of writing this in the comment section, please write directly to the company. At least then they will know who I am. Comment section la pathinga vechukongale. Ellaru solunga. Ninga yaaru? Bombay la enna panitirundinga? Solunga. Kana en peru Manikam. Enakku innoru peru irukku. Again, I'm emphasizing the fact that I'm not here to force you to get a vaccine. I'm just here to give you the facts so that you can make an informed decision. Let's see what Novavax does. Uh, well, uh, Novavax is a recombinant nanoparticle vaccine which is composed of trimeric spike glycoprotein and a potent matrix M1 adjuvant. In the vaccine or description, you can see the Kamal is a very If you look into the description of this Novavax vaccine this sounds like watching the movie Inception nobody knows what's going on and at least the one good thing is you can tell others that you have watched it so let me try to simplify this for you so we know that for a vaccine to work it needs to stimulate the body to produce antibodies against the spike protein so the whole goal is to introduce that spike protein inside the body somehow so what did all these mrna vaccines did they had the genetic material so they introduced that into the cell of the body and produced the spike protein so that the body produced antibodies against it so other vaccines like astrazeneca covaxin johnson and johnson they used a viral based vector they took a virus introduced into the body so that produced spike protein and then you have antibodies against the spike protein by the body So regardless of the mechanism of action we need that spike protein of the coronavirus inside the body to stimulate antibodies against this full blown coronavirus. So what Novavax did was instead of using the viral based vector or using a genetic material to create a spike protein inside the body they just created the spike protein per se. So they had this recombinant nanoparticle technology to create the actual spike protein of the coronavirus. made that in a liquid form and then created a vaccine to be injected inside the body in the novavax karanga paathainga yaar asinga ma mrna dummy virus vechikittu soppu chama mari velanukittu irukadhu straight ah better mass lighte venum nu solittu and the spike protein e form panitaing this novavax vaccine is like the patient that i saw when i just graduated from medical school you know this patient came in to me for a headache the first question that he asked was please refer me to a good neurosurgeon so he didn't want a general mbbs doctor he didn't want an md general medicine doctor no neurology doctor he directly want neurosurgeon so this vaccine is two doses as well has to be given 21 days apart it is an injection as well it has to be given in the muscle if i have to find a vaccine i will find a vaccine in a liquid form so that i can mix it along with the food maybe in ketchup or to cover south indian patients i can mix it in sambar or for north indian patients i can mix it in paneer butter masala So the phase 3 trial was done in UK there was a total of 15000 participants recruited one half got the placebo which means like just a simple saline and the other half uh, was given the vaccine so there were a total of 62 covid cases and out of which 56 was in the placebo group and only 6 of them were in the vaccine group uh, and among the 56 one of them had very severe covid 19 as well So hence when they analyzed the report they came up with an efficacy of 96% for the original Wuhan strain and 86% for the UK variant strain. So when you combine these two numbers the average comes around between 89.3% efficacy uh, but you should understand that 96% efficacy for original Wuhan strain is the best out so far compared to the 94 and 95% mrna vaccine efficacy so the efficacy went down from 96% to 89% because most of these patients were infected with uk variant mutants uh, which is a good thing because we know that this vaccine will definitely work for uk variants as well 
So they also did a phase 2b trial in South Africa from September to January and there were 4,400 patients recruited and out of which 10% of patients turned out to be positive for COVID-19. But the most important thing is most of these patients were infected with this South Africa variant mutant strain of COVID-19. In their analysis, they found out that they are 60% efficacious in covering South Africa's strain. Even though 60% sounds low, I will definitely take that because this is the only vaccine shown to cover South Africa variants so far. And even for a regular annual flu shot, we have only like 50 to 55% efficacy every year. So the most important thing to note here is in this South African trial, one third of COVID positive patients were already infected with COVID in the past. So when they analyzed the sequence, they found out that these patients were infected with original Wuhan strain initially, and then again, they got reinfected with the South Africa mutant variant. So this means two things. Number one, if you are infected with Wuhan strain in the past, the likelihood of reinfection with South Africa mutant strain is still there. And number two, this vaccine can give you significant protection against this new South Africa mutant strain as well. This is great news. So Novavax has been conducting trials in US and Mexico as well. It is called Prevent 19 trial. Their goal is to enroll 30,000 participants and they have reached 16,000 participants now. I'm pretty sure that they will get through this and then we'll be using this vaccine uh, probably in the later part of the year. So the side effect profile of this vaccine has been comparable to all the other vaccines in that short time period that have been evaluated. So 5 to 6% of patients experience malaise, fever, fatigue, uh, which disappears in 24 to 48 hours. So as with mRNA vaccines, I should report to you that this is also a relatively new technology. So we don't know the long term side effects. But again, in any situation, you need to analyze the risk and benefits of the situation. In the current clinical scenario, the benefit of the vaccine definitely outweigh the risk in most cases. So what does this mean to you is by the time an average risk person gets the vaccine, I am anticipating that you will have multiple choices to choose from and it is absolutely important to know about all these vaccines so that you can make an informed decision weighing the risk and benefits of the scenario at that time. One of the comments was like, this guy belongs to the democratic campaign. He is Kamala Harris cousin. Hey, the only Kamala I know is Kamala Kamesh. Da. Huh? Hey, I'm Dr. Pal. Can you swear on something that you love that nobody is paying you to promote the vaccine? I promise you that I swear on biryani that nobody is promoting me to pay the vaccine. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.